salvation. This is a call for salvation. If you do not know Jesus, this is a call for salvation. The call for salvation. Respond to the call for salvation. If you don't know the Savior, this is his presentation. It's been two thousand years. Hello, welcome to Voices in the Wilderness. I'm Reverend Maria. The Bible tells us that John the Baptist was a voice in the wilderness calling to his generation to repent. Jesus also said to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repenting means to regret your sins, to change your way of thinking, and to change your conduct. Our own generation is in trouble. We too need to change our conduct. At a national and international level, we're plagued with wars, rumors of wars, terrorism, the breakdown of the family, moral confusion, corruption in our government, and numerous other societal ills. Yet we believe that with God there is hope. We can live our lives by a higher standard and influence our families, our communities, and the world. My guest today is Jeff Mays. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you very much, Maria. It's nice to be here. It's nice to have you here. Uh, Jeff, you're an author and um, a man after God's own heart. I've uh, had uh, the pleasure of knowing you now for um, several months, and um, you, your uh, knowledge uh, of, um, of Scripture is um, very amazing. So, um, well, thank you very much. <laughs> I better bring it tonight. <laughs> we're expecting it. Okay. okay amen. And so we're going to talk about uh, your book, God's Truth and the Plight of Mankind, and I'm going to hold it up just so our audience can see it. Okay. okay? And um, it's a book that, well, I'll, I'm going to read page two. I mean, oh. it's something that you wrote. And so this could, could kind of give us a start of this, of this book. It says, what you will read in this book will startle several, confuse a few, bring anger to others, and challenge the rest. I totally agree with that. Amen. I mean, there is a lot going on in this, in this uh, book. And so um, I know you like to go into the deep, deep things of God and just kind of uh, try to get what God's true meaning of this, the matter is, uh, so to speak. So what is the main, main message of this book? Because there is a lot in here. The main message is that um, as believers in Christ, we need one another. And we have to drop this uh, disunity. Disunity comes about with denomination and um, bad doctrine and not want to let it go. The um, main thesis of the book is really chapter five. Chapter five is the uh, chapter that everyone loves or hate, but nevertheless, it contains within truth, revelations, the uh, planned future of the United States, why uh, Pe President Obama and the uh, people in Washington have to follow a certain plan because mm -hmm. it's been laid out for them. This is an ancient plan that is over 4,000 years ago, 4,000 years old, mm -hmm. uh, was first hatched in the book of Genesis, chapter 10, and it runs all the way to the book of Revelation. The um, meat of the matter is this. We are living in the days of Noah, or the time of Noah. This book focuses on a different aspect of the time or the days of Noah. Normally people focus on um, when Jesus talked about in chapter 24. I believe the days of Noah, of Noah is the time he was born, when he was born, until the day he died. So mm -hmm. I believe all those, that time frame, is the days of Noah. Mm -hmm. We have to see that same time frame here now. And we are at an age that is right before our eyes. So you're saying that that really it was very prophetic. So this, in if we read scripture, what's happening today, you're saying was laid out even back then. Yes, this is a, uh, a plan that was hatched by Satan. He used a man by the name of Nimrod, who was a hunter before the Lord. The Hebrew word for um, hunter before the Lord, I take the whole phrase, mean he opposed the Lord. Because we've seen later on that God brought judgment at the Tower of Babel. He, he began to confuse their tongues and language, and then they began to be scattered amongst the earth. So we know um, he was a man that opposed God. He was the man that... Um, had the first uh, one world religion, that was what he wanted to start, mm -hmm. a one world government, a social system in rebellion against God. And if you look around now in the world, that same spirit, that same flavor is coming 
back now. The United States, what's very interesting is that um, it's starting to resemble Babylon. Mm. When Nimrod um, started his quest to be in rebellion against God, there was a uh, tribes people that he conquered called the Akkadians. The, uh, the, the, the name for Babel in the Akkadian language means gate of the gods. Okay. If you look at the United States now, you can worship any God you want to but Jesus. And so that same gate of the gods, our countries, is open for all gods now. Mm -hmm. And that's so sad. I mean, that really is sad when we see uh, how our country is, is, um, is becoming because, uh, and, and, you know, thank God we're America and everybody has the right to, to worship however they want, I feel. But I just don't like that they kind of want to stop the, the Judeo-Christian uh, way of thinking, you know, our faith. And I think that's, that's very, very dangerous for, for our country because we take God out of, their con uh, out of the country and what do we have? What you're going to have is, again, the repeated plan which Nimrod hatched. Not to get into his um, bloodline, but I'll just skim on it from the top. Um, his, his, his dad was in rebellion against God, and his dad was in rebellion against Noah and God. And um, this plan, again, of the United States follows the book of Genesis, chapter 10. It follows Nimrod. We have to have a Babylonian Middle Eastern presence in our country. It has to be in a rebellion against God, because ultimately, ultimately the plan of Satan is to bring the United States and the rest of the world into an occultic flavor. Mm -hmm. And that's, and again, it's just a repeated cycle. So if anyone really wants to know what's going to happen, Read Genesis chapter 6 all the way to chapter 12, and it's the repeated cycle, and it mm. has to happen. But, you know, I like what you said about that the, the main message of your book is how the church needs to be united, because yes. in spite of everything that's happening, I believe that still God could show his, his mercy, his favor on this country and the world through the prayers of the righteous and through the unity. I mean, what, what do you say about, about, about that? I think what, what you said is, is true, but there are certain uh, things that has to happen. Okay. There has to be a move of God that begins to stir the people, but it has to be based on truth. Right. Um, there's there's kind of like a erroneous teachings out here that um, the, the children of God is gonna begin to do mighty exploits. Mm -hmm. in our current, I hate to say this word, but I'm going to say it anyway, state of ignorance. Mm. The, the believers are not mutants. We don't have a Christian mutated gene that at a certain time that we're just going to wake up one day with this power and right. we don't know how to harness it. Right, right, right. And so what's have to happen to bring in this movement of God, the children of God, we have to walk in greater truths of the Bible. Right. So, and one of the things I think you say is the first thing we need to do is we have to acknowledge that we have a problem even in the, um, uh, in the body of yes. Christ. The body of Christ is broken, yes. right? And you're saying because there's so many different uh, splinters and denominations and, and which, you know, I, one of my um, passions too is to see the, the unity of the church. And that seems to be actually the message of the hour because I've had several guests in the last maybe uh, two, three months, and they all have the same message. But of course, you know, that's, we have to admit that we need something different. It's, it's got to change. It has to come with an acceptance, and here's some facts. Right. As of 2012, there are over 2.8 billion Christians on the planet. Mm. Out of 2.8 billion Christians, there are over, listen to this number, over 41,000 different denominations mm -hmm. and organizations for Christianity. Mm. Right. Which, and each denomination, which you know, because you've been in the ministry for a while, carries a slightly different belief system and mm. theology with it. Mm. And so we can safely say, and I'll take the low number, there are f over 41,000 different doctrine, different theology, different belief systems coming from one Bible. That cannot be. Hmm. That is not scriptural. Right. And so this next move of God, Marie, I believe this with all my heart, 
It can't, cannot start with mainstream church. It cannot. Because if you read the Bible and just human history, the mainstream church has always opposed the move of God. They've always opposed it, been slow to recognize it. And even today, some people still don't believe in the healing, and that's not really for us today. And God doesn't move supernaturally. They still stuck in mainstream thinking. Mm -hmm. So the, the move of God can't come th from there. It would be not impossible, but it'd be hard for the move of God to come from big churches, what we would call mega churches. Not impossible, just a little difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and it'd be increasingly difficult again to occur from the way the current church structure is. Mm. I believe the next move of God will come from what we will call small groups. Small groups, yes. Uh, small groups re resemble that which we find in the book of Acts, where they went Amen. from house to house, yes. had all things in common. They, they, they kept themselves daily with the apostle doctrine. Mm -hmm. And so until we can get to that kind of um, lifestyle, yes, where denomination doesn't matter, title doesn't matter, mm -hmm. that's what's going to change it. Let me ask you a question. Okay. <laughs> Christ died yes. for the church to exist. Yes. We know in scripture that the father with his great planning hid the church in Christ, right? That's in scripture. He hid the church in Christ. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that angels couldn't see it. Are we talking angels? Are we talking Michael, yeah. Gabriel, mm -hmm. the angel that, re that goes around the throne of God and right. saying, holy, holy, holy. Yes. They yes. couldn't see the plan of God, which is the church. Right. The Bible said the holy prophets of old couldn't see the church age, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That means Abraham, Moses, Elijah, right. Enoch, Elijah, right? Mm -hmm. These are holy prophets of old. Right, right. These are mighty men of God. They couldn't see the plan of the church. Well, yes. Right? Okay. Yes. What I'm getting at, do you think that God did all that planning? He would hid this and only Paul got the revelation of the church. Mm -hmm. Just for us to go to a building on Saturday and Sunday, right. listen to someone with a mic. We may have an altar call. Uh, we give some money, yeah. sing a few songs, and go home. Yeah. The church is the second greatest plan that God and Jesus ever instituted for mankind mm -hmm. behind Jesus himself coming. The next greatest plan of God is the church. It's the church, yes. So it's much greater than what we're doing now. Yeah. Well, I believe, and, and I, I believe you're, you're right in, in, in that respect, but um, when, I, when I say that the church should be united, now that doesn't necessarily mean that, that we should all conform to one another, we're like little robots, no, we shouldn't no. be conformed, but be united in those truths, mm -hmm. in that, that, that foundation, because, you know, uh, there's there's beauty in diversity, mm -hmm. you know. Absolutely. So so because you know people go to different uh, churches and whatever because they're more comfortable in, in that church. I think that's beautiful, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm not even opposed to denominations, okay. uh, but but some somehow the the found the foundational truths mm -hmm. have to be agreed uh, agreed on. I agree with that. Okay. And so, and I think that that's really, and, and I love what you said about the small groups because I, I belong to one of those mega churches, but our, our, uh, the, the pastor, he's, he's a visionary, I believe, and what they're doing, even in that huge church, is breaking the church down to, to little sections Amen. because the acts, that, that's really, and I think that people that are visionaries that see the move of God, that want it different, you're right, it can't be, it can't be like that anymore. It has to be where people really get into these small groups, have these um, uh, relationships with one another and with God, the connection right. that people need, because that's really what, uh, you know, we're, we're, we need uh, connections, mm -hmm. and we need connections with people that, that are of like-minded. Right. You know, so. I couldn't agree with you more about going to different churches, because I agree with you again, diversity is needed. Yes. But if we can be diversified instead of thinking our way is the only way that's the problem. or the best way, yes, then that, we can go somewhere. Yeah, and that's the problem when we think that we've got all the answers and our way is right and the way we worship, you know, sing so many songs and that's the way it should be or whatever. That's when we have a big problem and then that's where it's really not the church of, of, of Acts, but now we've, this is a Western type, different type of thinking, you know. 
I, I think, Maria, that the church has to, like, like America is very arrogant and it's, and it's been very arrogant and it's almost in its beginning that we know better than everyone else. But just like what you just said, Western society, the Bible is a Middle Eastern book. We are following Middle Eastern faith, right? right. Mm -hmm. And so we don't know better if we don't understand the Middle Eastern culture and ways. Right, right. And so I, I believe, again, this change can only come by leadership first. I shouldn't say only, but it would really help if the leadership would say, hey, you know what? We need to come together. And I mean, you know, pastors and mm -hmm. things of that nature. And I don't know everything. Right. So maybe if this ministry over here specialized in healing or specialized mm -hmm. in deliverance, Maybe we need to go over there or mm -hmm. we can learn from them and they can right. learn from us and we can break down these walls. Right, right. But even when you said that it's a, a Middle Eastern book, that may be true, but even not the way middle, some Middle Eastern, because they have the same problem, the way of thinking has changed. Mm -hmm. So it's not to say that this is, you know, the, 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 the middle, middle Eastern way of thinking is the correct way as it is currently, because oh, they, no, no. okay? Uh, right. So I just wanna make sure that, that we, we understand that, because just like we have developed different um, traditions, habits in the West, so have they. So I think that we've all, the whole uh, world has lost the essence of what scripture was meant to be. I agree 120% with you. I guess what I was saying, what I, what I should have said this way is that God places great on its own leadership. Much is given, much is required. Yes. If you want to sit in that chair, it's much more required of you right. to, to be in that role of leadership. And um, regardless of East and West, here's something that has to happen. Like the Father sets the bar. We see in um, Psalms, uh, I believe it's 113 and 6, where we see the father humbled himself to behold the heaven and the earth. Yes. Right. And then we see in Philippians uh, two and eight that um, Jesus humbled himself even to the death on the cross. Mm -hmm. We also read in the book of Revelation where John began to talk to this angel and the angel humbled himself. He said, hey, don't worship me. Right. Worship belong to the father. I'm your brother. I'm your right. fellow servant. Right. We also see that Paul also say he's the least amongst all the saints. He humbled himself and Paul had the greatest revelation again of the church than mm -hmm. any person written in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so I believe with leadership, it starts there. Humble yourself. Yes. Even though you sit mm -hmm. in that chair, you are still the least. You are yes. a servant. Yes. And I love what you said because that seems to be, like, like I was uh, saying that um, uh, my other guests that have come to talk about unity, they said the very same thing, that love and humility equals unity. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think that that's it. And, you know, and um, regardless of, of, you know, what people say about this country that maybe, you know, like you said, that, that maybe there is an arrogance about us. That maybe there, that there is, I don't know, you know, and compared to other countries, but I know that God loves, just like he loves all the countries, he loves America yes, and every do. country and every part of the world. There's a purpose and a plan for, for uh, I mean, God created every nation. So there's a purpose and a plan, but I, I like what you said too, who much is given, much is, is going to be required. So yeah. we being this, this huge, amazing, wonderful country, there is a lot that's required of us mm -hmm. to the nations. But the biggest thing I think what's required is our faith to, um, in, to, to, our true faith, the faith that you're talking about, to, to be uh, shared with the country. But as you were saying in the beginning, if we're losing that, then we're losing our purpose and the plan that I, I believe that God wanted us to have. Yes. I, I believe as great as this country is, it kind of reminds me of David. Like David was a man after God's own heart. Right. Um, at one time, the United States was a shining light beacon to the whole world. Yes. And the whole world was pretty much in darkness. Yes. Right? Yeah. And, and just like David, uh, the United States found, it wasn't perfect, no mm -hmm. one's perfect, but it found favor yes. with God. Yes. And that was. And even when you begin to do wrong, mm -hmm. again, just like David, mm -hmm. when you are found out, and then the people begin to talk about God based upon your conduct, mm -hmm. like with David, mm -hmm. when um, the Philistines and the other people was like, oh, 
you sleeping with um, Bathsheba, you had Uriah killed, and they start talking about God. And if you notice, God responded then. Our country is the same. I listen to, and I listen and I read what other people are saying mm -hmm. from different countries. Sure. And one of the things they're saying is that, you know, the United States is not this uh, uh, shining light like it used to be, or right. not this knight in shining armor. It done a lot of dirt, a lot of damage. And I believe they called other countries to look at God a certain way because yes. at one time we stood for that. And that, that was my point. If we had this plan and purpose to let the world see yes. our light of the United States, and if we're losing that, then of course the, the country's not going to, uh, other countries are not going to have that same level of respect mm -hmm. because that, that, that beauty, that humility, that, that love, that acceptance that perhaps what once was. And of course, like you said, we weren't perfect. We never were, uh, were but we were still, I believe, a, a, a mighty country with a plan and a purpose Absolutely. That, that God had. Now, so um, what would you say is a strength and a weakness of the church right now? Wow. I think the uh, strength of the church is that everyone recognizing that something is happening. Mm -hmm. And if you can't recognize something, then you can't change. There's no hope for you changing. Right. And by the uh, church realizing something's different, something's getting ready to happen. When I did my interview, I'm um, sorry, my research for my book, I interviewed different people. Mm -hmm. Most of them weren't even Christians, and I'd done it on purpose mm -hmm. from uh, sheriffs, state troopers, doctors, lawyers, and right. so on. Um, oh, you've got a lot of great statistics in there, that's for sure. And they all say one thing. I asked them, I said, um, do you think the world is changing for the good or for the worse? And it's great asking police officers this question, right? And they was like, oh, it's changing for the worse. They, they're not even saved. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, do you think something's getting ready to happen to the world? Everyone yes. said yes. Right. And so it's this great awareness that God has placed out within everyone. And it's great that the church, and I believe this is the church strength, that you're recognizing something has to change. Right. God is saying something. In the last two or three years, if you notice, God has been saying, playtime's over. Right. Playtime's over. Right. Oh, yeah. Playtime's over. It w I think it's a rea reality check for all of us, huh? Um, to answer the, 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 what's the weakness of the church? Yeah. What, what, what weakness do you see? I think the weakness of the church is that they're, again, like the children of Israel, where they desire a king, mm. and God said, I want to be your God. And so I think we rely too much on a, a man, which mm -hmm. would be our leaders, to lead us into truth. What scripture says is the Holy Spirit is the agent that right. God has used to lead us to all truth. And you have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling and not rely that much on your leader, leaderships yes. or friends, because yes. it has to be personal. Absolutely. And I, and I think that's one of the weaknesses of the church is we still have this I don't want to say worship of the pastor, but it, mm -hmm. I think he relied on him too much than what yes. he should. He's just a man with a gift and a calling. That's all. Right. I'm not, the, you know, I'm not trying to demeanor him or no, anything no, no, like that's that. Right. That's right. But this, I'm going to elevate him there. No, he's, your pastor's your brother. Right. Exactly. He's your brother. Right. And well, one of the, the things that I see, though, sometimes maybe people t tend to depend on their own uh, knowledge or relationship from the information that the um, pastor gives them without going on their own mm -hmm. too and having that personal relationship with God and seeing what God has for them. Again, I agree with you. And what we have to understand is that each person can only see things until God enlighten them from their perspective. Right, right. From their gifts, from their callings, from their own studying, what they're influenced by. Right. We cannot hide the fact that most of westernized Christianity came from, it was a mixture of Christianity, that was truth from the Bible, but also pagan Rome. Mm -hmm. And so this mixture has been passed There's down. There's some influences, yeah. And um, once you realize that, that no one, the Bible says that we see in part and prophesy in part, mm -hmm. no one has the total truth. Right. And so I need you, Maria, to show me something. Right. I need the cameraman to show me something. Right. I need my wife to show me something. Right. And you need me to show you something. Right. And then, and only then, can we begin to put this puzzle together. 
And that's why God's, I mean, it's so beautiful how he describes us, we're a body. We're a body. And you know, the hand and the foot and the eyes, there, there's a function mm -hmm. for, and so together that, though, that's how we can really um, uh, fulfill the purpose of not only ourselves, but of, of, uh, the, of the church and of the world, really, through, through, through the light that's in us. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you hear a lot about um, grace almost as the um, uh, do whatever you want card, uh, but we know about w how does God feel about iniquity? Well, there's a lot of um, misconception about iniquity mm -hmm. because some people believe that sin and iniquity is the same. Mm -hmm. But sin and iniquity are kind of like brothers where one is, the other sure to follow. Mm -hmm. Sin, we'll look at it this way, is the uh, transgression of the law. Mm -hmm. You know, I committed an act. Right. Iniquity is what drives you to commit that act. Oh, okay. That is the reason why the Father said, I hate iniquity, right? Because it's always that, that seed that's driving you, driving you, driving you. So if sin was a tree, the iniquity would be the nutrients. Ah, okay. And so, um, that is why when a person may struggle with sin, and everyone has certain sins you struggle with, you can't shake everything off. Um, and you crying out to God, and you really, truly want to get rid of it. But it keeps coming back. It has a voice, right? You, you have repented, but as long as that iniquity is there, you're probably going to struggle with it. Well, then we have to pray against that iniquity, you know. But um, would you believe that our time's almost up? So, so just in, in 30 seconds, one, um, uh, what, would, what, would, what do you want to leave our guests with? Just a couple of sentences. We have to look at the Father from His perspective. And when we look at the Father from His perspective, everything about our lives and the way we see others and treat others and even pray to God will begin to change. Yes. We have to look at things from the Father viewpoint and remember, it's all about knowing our Heavenly Father That's it. first. That's, That's it. it. Everything That's else is second. That's it. Thank you so much. You're That's welcome. it. That's it. Knowing our Heavenly Father. Thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you for having me. And thank you, our viewing audience, for joining us today. If you want more information, please contact me at marigold1 at comcast.net, 877-991-4800. Uh, check out our new website, www.voicesinthewildernesstv. Um, as Jeff said, we encourage you to go and look at the scriptures yourself and examine them for yourself and get that relationship with God because um, I know that you will agree that there is something happening. There's a shift in the atmosphere and um, God loves you very much. He loves you so much, and He wants to give you that life that He's uh, promised you, a life of blessings, a life of ab abundance. So um, we bless you, and we know that um, He has a purpose and a plan for you. So keep on searching the scriptures, and until next time, I wish you good health, success, and spiritual growth. Thank you. A call for salvation, respond to the call for salvation. If you don't know the Savior, this is His presentation. In the same manner, God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son because He stopped His profile and real. It is to 